So yeah, we we spoke about the master data, uh, starting with the user, supplier, how we maintain that, the connectors that we use. Okay. Uh, extensively, we'll be using those connectors when you get into the administrator role. Okay. And then uh, we get, we got into the company structure. We understood what is business, what is company code. We, we see it as business legal entity here. Both are one at the same. We understood what is business unit. Okay. So the business, so the business units, uh, which is which is a combination of uh, the company code and the other organization unit. Okay, so the company code stands first, and then the business unit comes in, which is the combination of the verticals and horizontals. Yeah. So, and then we understood what is cost center or the cost object where we classify the source of amount to be paid to the supplier. That is like, you know, that's, that's where we calculate for one particular project, the costing for one particular project, okay? So each project would have a cost, cost center against that the cost will be booked. Okay, so the company details, we understood what is company details and so on. So now we are getting into uh, something called uh, the labor type. Okay, so the labor type is like, what are all the types that they will be using a company as as an uh, company, for example, Energy Australia, how, how, what are all the tools they are trying to use? For the external workers. The rules for an employee, they, it doesn't matter. The role for the employee doesn't matter. The employee rules will be booked here. It will, it will all be recorded here in the user role. Whereas this is the primary role of a contractor, the external employee. Okay. So in that, uh, we see it depends upon the company. It depends upon uh, how companies company wants to utilize their external employees. So in this case, we have got uh, admin or clerical role, accounting and finance, scientific, industrial. So these are the primary stuff. Under this, we will be having a whole lot. That I'm going to explain you. Okay, so this is something which we have to make, which we have to maintain within field class because this is exclusively for field class. This doesn't come from anywhere else. It's not in ERP, it's not in any other system. It is in field class all alone. Okay. So this we maintain, why we maintain this? I'm gonna explain you that when we move further, we'll get to know. Okay, and then we have got something called location. Locations are, as, as I explained to you, locations are uh, the, the, look for the company locations in various sites. For example, Bangalore is a site. In Bangalore, we have got, in Bangalore, we have got something called, uh, okay, in Vijayanagar, we have got a yeah, location. Similarly, Tamil Nadu in Chennai, in Chennai is a site. And in Chennai, we have got in, in some in some uh, place we have got a location. Okay, the location with the code and the address will be maintained here. Okay, these are the sites. Sites are like uh, 
I would say cities in which um, the locations will be maintained. So we need to have the site in place to get the location in place. Okay, in first place. Okay, in Vijayanagar, I have got the location. For that reason, I need to have the site first. The Bangalore site should be present here so that I can maintain the location there. Okay, so without the site, I cannot maintain the location. Both are interrelated. Sites come first and then the location. Okay, so we have uh, something called email messaging template, email message template. Uh, so here we go. So these are the messaging template, email messaging template. Uh, these are the templates that's been used for uh, various functionalities within field class okay so for for example you know how an email to be sent to a user for example his contractor is ending this month if at all if he has a requirement to extend his contract if he has an option to extend his contract Field glass is going to notify the user that okay, your contractor is ending on so and so date. It starts notifying the as per the requirement. Well, we we set it up the notifications frequency. Probably say, for example, if the contractor is ending on July 30th, then it's going to send a reminder from as per uh, how many times we want to. So it's going to send the reminder, say, starting uh, one month before. Yeah, stating that, okay, if your contractor is ending, if you want to extend, you can go ahead and extend. Okay, these are the formats that have been utilized here. We have got in different languages, a different format. Okay, so, so in different languages, it's going to go, we have got the header and footer, which explains about uh, what they are trying to say okay so this is uh, the email message uh, template and we have got uh, the messaging part so this is the template and this is the message for what reason there are a whole lot of reason for that matter uh, Probably it is uh, because the contractor is absent or he has not marked his timesheet for a certain period. He has uh, got some changes in his uh, profile or his assignment within field glass. And hence, his, uh, he gets the intimation. The manager gets the intimation on the contractor's changes absence, so on and so forth, okay? So that's the reason why the messages will be maintained here. Uh, no doubt uh, we can set this up, we can enable and disable it, okay? Send the notification. We have got in different languages. And then comes the system variables. System variables uh, gives us the different uh, messaging. You know, system variables is where we have to maintain the reason, the modules, the different modules that we have to maintain. And that will be used in the messaging part and the email message template. Okay, so here we have got a whole lot of things. If we go to the job posting, we can find something like this. For what reason we have, yeah, we are trying to do this. It's 
who needs to be intimated. Who needs to, to, to be intimated? And what are all the information that needs to be given in the email? A small part. Uh, this is something which is covered uh, at the implementation point. No doubt uh, over uh, the support, if the requirement lies, if there's any enhancements or something as such, we will be involved in this as well. Okay, so do we have any questions, guys, on messaging part? Any questions on messaging? It's a simple stuff. It is, it is exclusively used to send out the notifications to the users or the contractors managers for various reasons. We have got the various reasons for it. So the reasons will be maintained in the system variables. The same reasons will be utilized on the in the messaging in the messaging option. We are going to select what needs to go and what not. And we'll use the email message template the temp in the in that template. Whatever the settings that are made in the messaging uh, section will go through. Go to the users or managers. Okay. Okay. So let's let's understand on how to configure a template. Okay, so now we let's let's consider it is SWW. So SWW, which is related to contractors. Contractors are workers. Okay, so we need to understand this. We have got company code. We have got the company code in place, which will be associated to all the workers and business unit. which is the combination of company code and other organization. Okay. So company code and other organization unit in the sense company code in probably company code may be considered as the different businesses within the company and different organization unit is the subcategorization within the different businesses, okay? So we have got something called cost center. Which explains the amount to be paid to the supplier. This is uh, where we need to maintain the budget. So I'm explaining this because uh, you can understand uh, how uh, we need to maintain the templates, the job posts and templates or as well as the templates. Okay. 
and this budgeting budgets are not maintained in field plans or Ariba. It is always maintained in ERP. As I explained yesterday, uh, where does this master data comes from? It is coming from ERP. Okay. So normally the finance part will always be maintained in ERP, and hence we have got the budget to be maintained in ERP. So this cost allocation are like this cost allocations are cost center. plus GL account, which is GL number, which is uh, gen, general ledger account. It is it is something which is in, within the ERP. Under general ledger account itself, uh, the cost center comes in. So cost allocation are maintained there. Okay. So GL numbers, we can maintain a single or multiple zero okay so this is the concept that we have to understand and i have explained to you uh, try to understand it if you have any questions you can ask me. okay so i'll be explaining you how we set up uh, the template within the system okay so when we are uh, trying to maintain a template within the system, within a field class, that is SOW print template or the job posting template, uh, we need to understand there are some uh, rules and regulations that we need to follow. And accordingly, we need to maintain things. Okay. So, in uh, in SOW, we can allow multiple currencies. We can allow multiple currencies. But whether we can do it or not, we shouldn't. We should never conflict with this in template. We should never conflict this in the template. Because uh, allowing the multiple currencies might uh, create problems within the template itself. However, they will be having the, the options to utilize multiple currencies at the, at the other side. We can allow it we can allow it if it is global in nature. If the requirement is global in nature. For example, global in nature in the sense uh, dollars are global in nature. Yeah. So USD is global in nature. It is accessible across the globe. If business needs that, we can configure this to allow multiple currencies. If not, if it is no, if it is 
if the requirement is local in nature. Okay. So while uh, creating the template, we have we have got an option called supplier can edit worker start date. Supplier can edit worker start date. Mm. So when we say supplier can edit the supplement, the worker start date, say for example, the company has a requirement to start on 1st of July or 1st of August, say. And for some reason, he, the contractor is unable to join on that particular day. Supplier can themselves decide, okay, let's start it with two on second or third. Because the contractor is not is not available on first. So he can do it him, supplier can do it himself. So when he does himself, the buyer will not be having the internal control. He will not understand what is happening. Yeah. It is a requirement of the buyer and buyer should have all the control over this uh, transactions. And hence, we should never conflict this in the template. Never conflict this in the template. Uh, in extreme cases, I can say yes. If it is, if buyer agrees, okay, that's all right. This is not a major issue. Then we can mark it as yes. Uh, I hope you guys are understanding who is buyer and who is supplier here, right? So that's what it is. If the buyer is all fine with this, allowing supplier to edit the start date or decide the start date, it's not a problem. We can set it as yes in the template. If not, normally it should be no. Normally it should be no. Any general requirement, which is any requirement general in nature, yes, we should set it as no. Okay, so these are the options I'm explaining you guys. I'll show you in the system how it looks. Okay, you can look into that. That's not a problem. And you can even access when once uh, the server is up and running. Can supplier shorten worker end date? Can supplier shorten worker assignment? For example, uh, an assignment would be created against a contractor between 1st of August to end of December, 30, end of December, which is 31st of December. Can a supplier go ahead and reduce it to November 30th? Is what the question is. Can supplier shorten the worker assignment? 
So we should never config this. So these are the option while we are configuring a template. Okay. And I'm just explaining to you what all we need to do. This is a general rule. And I'll show you how it looks in the system. Okay. So never config this in template. Only buyer should have the authority. So it's only the buyer who should be having the access to do this. Supplier can edit the worker start date. No, it's been created. It's been created. Done. Can supplier shorten the worker assignment? Never. Only buyer should do this. Okay. Can extend the worker ending. Can extend the worker ending. Can supplier extend the worker ending. No, never conflict this. Never conflict this in the template. Only buyer. Should do this. Only buyer should do this. Okay. So workers primary contact. Workers primary contact can be changed on SWW or work order. Or the work order. Yes. The primary contact for a contractor will be the point of contact from the suppliers and okay, it might be suppliers administrator or someone else within the suppliers company who will be the point of contact with respect to a contractor or some of the contractors. So they will respond, they'll respond whenever the buying organization is facing any problem regarding the contract. So this will be normally entered by the supplier when they are submitting the assignment to the, when they're trying to submit the assignment. To a work or to a job posting or to an SPW. And uh, yeah, they're going to enter their name as well. So they will be the primary contact. Just give me a quick minute. Okay. 
So the point of contact will be by the supplier. And uh, we are not gonna config this in the template. Can supplier or the worker submit? Because see this, we are not configuring the template because by default, it is supplier who is gonna enter this. Okay, can supplier or worker submit absences? And supply our work and submit absences. We should again not conflict this in the template. So it is not supplier or worker submitting the absence. It's both supplier and the worker. This is what we need to select the option as. Why, if it is a worker who will be available, he's gonna submit his answers when he's submitting his timesheet. Whereas when, a, when the worker is not available at all over the period of uh, submitting this timesheet, so you might be completely out for some for some days. So at the time of uh, submitting, you know, supplier has to take the responsibility for workers' time sheet. So this is one of the things. This is mandatory, I would say. Attachment. These are optional. Attachments are like uh, in S4W, they're gonna explain the, the job description, the roles and responsibilities that they're looking from a contractor. They are gonna attach that requirement from suppliers and they might attach this resume or CV. Okay, these are the attachments. Uh, these are optional as per the bias requirement. Whereas these things uh, forms very important to, to function, to have internal control for the buyer. Okay. So attachments are optional. Uh, normally they'll be using it. Uh, yeah, normal file type can be uploaded here. not more than 20 MB. Okay. Characteristics. Characteristics are uh, one of the uh, major rules and regulations that is driving the SOW. Okay, this is these are the characteristics which is only available within the SOW module. Okay, characteristics. So let's uh, 
Okay, so this is uh, this is one of the big part I would say within SW template configuration. Okay, so templates are of two types. One is master template, and the other one is other one is the child template. Okay, so master template is uh, normally maintained uh, to have all the common categories all the common requirements that will be used across the company's requirement. Okay, across the company completely. And uh, the child uh, templates will inherit the data from the master template. So that's that's all right, let it be there. I'll, I'll come to that again. Okay, let's uh, discuss on the characteristics. Characteristics are like fees, events, milestones, these events, milestones, and management events. Okay. So these are the characteristics. Fees is the fee that needs to be paid for the service render. So S4W basically, basically S4W is like a template will be created and S4W consists of numerous contractors working under it. For example, you are a service company, you got a you got a project for say energy australia to support sap field class you're not the only one you might be one but all you guys together might work for one project okay that is called as the characteristics that is called as the so that is called as the SOW under the SOW. SOW is a it's called as the statement of work, which is a contract. It just explains what are all the requirements are to be fulfilled by the contractors or a service company altogether. So that is the so service company uh, is going to incorporate all those uh, contractors into the project. Okay, so they will be aligned to that SOW and. Uh, They'll, they'll start working. So under characteristics, we have got something called fees. Uh, fees is here because the service company needs to be paid for the service that's been rendered. So according to the SOW, you know, they can decide how they are paying it. If, if it is a flat, okay every month i'm going to pay so much then it is called as p events are like for example if it is an implementation project each phase will be considered as events okay the first phase planning phase are we done with the planning phase get the approval from the buyer and the fees will be paid. That is based on the events, based on the milestones, completions of the milestones. Okay, so milestones are like you know they would set the milestones. Okay, these service come the the buyer might not be knowing what exactly the things needs to be done. Buyer will know the outline of it. Okay, buyer will know the outline. Okay, field class needs to be implemented. These are the phases uh, for an implementation project. So each phase can be considered as the events and the milestones. Each phase implemented can be considered as the milestone. Okay, based upon the events or milestones, the um, amount will be the money will be released to the service company. 
management events. Management events are uh, not not for uh, the payment purpose. Management events just refers to any of the meetings that needs to be held over the period, uh, any of the calls and meetings that needs to be scheduled across uh, the uh, product owners and the business owners to understand the requirement, to understand how the business is going on. So that accordingly, we can try to implement the software. Okay, so that is the management events. So these are the characteristics within SOW template. Okay, so the characteristics can be controlled from uh, template. The type. Uh, I think I could work here. Controlled from the template. The type. Type maybe these events or milestone. As per the agreement between the buyer and the supplier. Okay. At the milestone visibility can be controlled visibility in the sense visibility in the sense uh, who can see what visibility can be controlled from the template okay so this is who can see what, okay. There are certain things who where buyer just wants to know. Supplier need not know about that. That can be controlled here in the template. There are certain things that needs to be disclosed, must and should disclose to the supplier. Those are called as the buyer and supplier can view those. Okay, so that can be controlled here in the template. Okay, so we can have uh, multiple SOWs. We can have multiple SOWs uh, for different roles or say for uh, uh, for one particular role we can create one master template and you can utilize that for the different roles. As per the company's requirement, you know, if at all, if they want for each uh, of their business unit, they might require different kind of templates because the, the characteristics that needs to be, characteristics visibility might vary, characteristics might vary altogether. Based upon that, we might configure a single master template or multiple master templates. Okay. So these can be controlled within the template. Okay. So no other control should be done within the template. So based upon the buyer's requirement, we can the buyer can do whatever he wants while creating the templates for himself, the child templates for himself. Okay. So do we have any questions on this? Any questions, guys? No questions? No, Suman. Okay. So let's get into the worker. Worker, 
under SOW. So now we are just talking about SOW for contingent worker. I'll come back. Okay. So we are just talking about the SOW. So what happens? How does the process go? Okay, first let, let's talk about the template and then get into the process. So these workers, the SOW workers will never be coming from from template. Okay. So the template is just for the creation of SOW. Okay, these templates are useful because there are a whole lot of things which will be there. You know, the user cannot just keep on inputting this every time he tries to create the template. To make things easier, we create templates within field class. By this, user will be having a couple of steps maximum to complete a template. Okay, so SOW worker will not be coming from the template. So it is mandatory It's mandatory to be defined defined by the buyer on the technical requirements, technical parameters. Technical parameters and options that's been provided. To the escrow that Okay, so SOW workers will never be coming from the template. It is mandatory to be defined by the buyer on the technical parameters and the options provided to the SOW. Okay. So why it is mandatory? It is mandatory because, it is mandatory because they need to they need to give the scope so buyer will be knowing they might not be knowing okay for example if it is an implementation project they might not be knowing the concepts of that particular software technicalities of that particular software but they would be knowing what should be their end result is they would be knowing the steps to accomplish that yeah so that needs to be mentioned in the template. Okay, by that, the supplier will decide who all the workers or the contractors, who all the workers or suppliers, employees can do this. And he is going to onboard. Okay, so the suppliers, in the sense, uh, the supplier is going to submit rather than onboard, I would say submit. 
Okay, supplier will submit the workers into SWW. Once selected by the buyer, they will be onboarded. Okay. This is this is the procedure. So SOW workers is not from the template. Template is just for the sake of providing the characteristics, the requirements, the in and out of the role. No doubt they will be there'll be an option as well uh, for the creator, the user who is creating the template to put across his uh, requirements there as well. Okay, the master template will give you the generalized uh, characteristics that needs to be maintained. On top of it, it's the user who can go ahead and update the additional requirements in the template in the child as well as you. Okay, so when once it is done, uh, that will be approved. Uh, that will go through the approval flow. So it will go to the approval flow. Uh, as per well, as per well it's been designed, we'll be talking about the approval flow soon, or say by tomorrow at least. Uh, approval config. Okay. So based upon the approval configuration, the approval flow to the different users. They will they will review and approve it. Post the final approval, it will be distributed amongst the suppliers. Okay, the suppliers are gonna look into that. Uh, look at the requirement and uh, see if they can serve it. If they are willing to serve it, they are gonna accept it. Post uh, the exception. If at all, if they have anything that needs to be adjusted within the SOW, they're going to talk to them. To and fro can happen in SOW. Post that the workers will be the workers will be attached to the SOW. Once uh, the buyer interviews and selects them, they will be onboarded into that company or to the SOW. There's another thing called SOW bid. <laughs> SOW bid is something where they're going to distribute to various uh, companies and they'll start bidding. In the sense, they're going to they're going to request the quotation across the companies and see who quotes the best and who has the best resource to serve for. So amongst the bits that comes in, you know, they can go ahead, they can they can work around with their budget, with their requirement, are they fulfilling the requirements, so on and so forth. And then select one of the supplier and create this for W. Okay, that is an, another process within SOW. That is called SOW bits. From SOW bits, after the bit, the SOW will be created. So this is the, I'm, I'm talking about the SOW, however, the template. Okay. So, There's another option called auto activate. This would have worker. Auto activate this could have worker. So we can always give it as always set it to yes. Auto activate in the sense uh, activating their work order when once they are on board. 
So <clears throat> if we don't keep it as is, the MSP team or uh, the buyer should go and activate each of the SOW workers assignment one by one. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of final confirmation, I would say. I don't think, you know, it's like the SOW will be created, sent over, there will be to and fro's between the buyer and the supplier, so on and so forth. Being said that we have got uh, so much of conversation between the buyer and supplier, we don't need to have yeah, a final confirmation. We can go ahead and directly activate the SOW worker. Okay, so by setting it yes, the system is going to auto activate the worker. Once uh, the worker registers into the field class. Auto register. Auto register is what I worker. So auto register in the sense, you know, they need to register into the field glass because they need to have their credentials. Why they need to have the credentials to fill up their time and expense sheets. If in case they decide over the SOW that they are not filling the time and expense. It's not based upon their time and expense we are paying. Then we can set it to yes. Okay. Worker need not will be time and expense. Okay. Let's auto register. If the worker has to fill in the time and expense, it is based upon the time and expense. If the time and expense is considered as the event, based upon that, the payments will be released. In that case, the auto register SOW worker should be set to no. Because they need to fill the timesheet and accordingly, accordingly they they will be paid. Okay. So required approvals on SOW workers added during the SOW response for division response. We should set it to yes. Okay, so a supplier cannot be on his discretion. He cannot just add on, keep on adding his own uh, workers. Yeah, it needs to be monitored. Whom is adding? Is he the right person to be added? The buyer should uh, verify it. Yeah, that's when he will be having the internal control. So requires approval on SOW workers added during the SOW response or the revision response. SOW when once revised needs to be responded by the supplier as well. Similarly, SOW when created needs to be responded. So while res when they are responding, they can, they can add the worker as well. So if they were add the worker, do they need the approval? Yes they need the approval. Okay, so under the SOW response, they can, the supplier can add uh, more than the number of workers that is uh, required. 
okay? More than the number of workers that is required, that is mentioned in the SOW. And agree on uh, the rates and uh, categories, rate and ca characteristics, dates, requirements, so on, agree on them. So when they agree on them, they're gonna accept the SOW. If they disagree, they can edit the SOW. They can edit the SOW and uh, send it back to the buyer. And this is the two and pro of the deal. Okay. So before they get onto the deal, they try to understand, they, they want to make sure they're creating a win-win situation. Okay. So if they disagree, they can go ahead and edit. Uh, and then when once they edit, again, the buyer organization has to overview that, review that, and they need to come on an agreement that, okay, they are fine with this. They can make the required edits if they want and send back to the supplier for the acceptance. So it needs to be approved at the buyer's end and then it will be sent back to the suppliers for the acceptance. If say buyer is not willing to completely change, they can communicate that over as well and supplier can reject it. Okay. <clears throat> so it is, it is all uh, the agreement between the two parties. That's that's what the to and fro communication that goes on. Okay, so each of the parties can accept, each of the parties can edit, buyer can approve it, supplier can accept or reject it. Okay. So this is uh, the complete setup that I'm talking about in the SOW template. Okay, at the, at the buyer side, while creating the SOW, we will choose standalone SOW. Okay. So this is uh, the common creation, I would say, at the buyer side. At the buyer's end. For creating the S word here. Standalone S word of Standalone SOW is something which is not having any inheritance from the master template. Okay, so it's it's standalone. It's it's not it's it, it is not having any inheritance from the master SOW template. The the creator from the buyers and while creating, he has to create it completely. Okay, so when he does that cost allocation will be procurement schedules type is equal to single this is this is just for the understanding I would say you know I don't know how well you can understand these stuff uh, it's it's like you know uh, the cost allocation needs to be done I'm, I'm just trying to say that you know when he's choosing a standalone SW it, it's, it's not getting the inheritance from the 
master data, master template. So when it is not getting the inheritance from the master template, he has to create each and everything. He has to fill up each and everything. While he's doing that, the cost allocation needs to be from one of the cost centers, procurement cost centers. We need to schedule. Schedule may might be any of the characteristics. Okay, define SOW workers. Add rates. Worker role. Add the worker role. Rates per day. Okay. All these things he needs to do it manually. I would say define whatever workers. Plus add rates plus worker role rates as day rates per day. Okay. Add rates is the rates per day. So he has to do all these things. When when he is uh, creating a child template from the master, he don't need to do this because most of the things will be defined there. Okay, cost allocation will be defined because we are creating. Cost allocation might be defined because we are creating the master template for uh, each of the each of the business units or each of the cost centers probably. Okay, schedules will be there. Will be set up. The standard schedule will be set up in the, the master template. If they are not following the standard schedule, that's when the standalone SWW would work for them because they are not using the standard uh, characteristics. Yeah, they are not using the standard characteristics and hence they can go ahead and select the standalone and create everything. Okay, so the schedules, so they can create the schedules, they can define the worker, the worker role, rates, so on and so forth and send it to the supplier. So suppliers, what they do, A supplier send they will check check the SPW. They'll check the SPW under the actions. They will add the SOW worker. They'll add the SOW worker. and accept it. And submit. Okay. So, this is the, this is the common criteria of an SOW. So we understood a bit about uh, the, the process flow. We understood a bit about the process flow. We understood what are all the common things that we need to maintain within the uh, master template config. And when we can use the standalone templates for SWW and what the supplier will be doing, okay? So in case, uh, he has added the rate, for example, the rates has been added, but supplier is not that fine about the rates. 
So he wants the rates to be a bit high. What he can do, he can reject. He can reject B, S, W. He has the comment section there. He can mention that, okay, I want so-and-so rates or else it's not gonna work for me. Then the buyer will review it. If he's okay with his budgets, he's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna do that, make the changes and submit back. Supplier says, okay, he's come to my rate. Thank you, accept. On board, add the workers. When once workers are added, you know, the buyer company, what they do, they're gonna interview. Might be the, the requirement is five, they might submit seven. Okay, out of seven, they're gonna select five, best five. And they onboard. When once they onboard, the contractor will receive the username of the password for the field pass to submit the time and expense. In case the time and expense is not is not required, then uh, the registration process will be made. Uh, the registration process will be nullified there. There'll be no registration process. The worker will not register. We spoke about it. We'll, we'll set it to auto register. So by selecting the worker, the worker will be auto registered and auto activated. By that, he'll be onboarded. He don't need to submit the time and expense. The, the bill will be based upon the events. Some event that needs to be completed or some milestone that needs to be completed. It's not the P. P is when he's submitting the time and expense. Okay, based upon the time and expense, monthly ones or quarterly ones, they're gonna pay. Okay, so these characteristics, there are three characteristics out of these three. As per the buyer's requirement, they might go with any one of them. Services here is the section for setting up the complete SOW part. No doubt the approval flow comes from the workflow. We'll talk about it later. Okay, so now let's understand the service subsections in the service. Clause library. So clause library is, uh, is something that which will be maintained uh, to use it in the template as clauses. Some of the rules and regulations that is normally that is normally being uh, used by a company, a buyer company. Okay. So when I click on new, I can go ahead and create it. So these are the clauses, the rules and regulations that I can maintain. Some companies maintain it, some doesn't. Okay, these are the clauses that can be maintained and used in the template. These are the event libraries. Event libraries are like, you know, for example, if the company is using events based upon the events itself they are willing to pay the uh, supplier in such cases they use events we can go ahead and create the events here put on a code put on a name events will be created those events can be used in the template Okay, fees library. Fees library is the fees for the various. Uh, if it is if it is a flat per month fee or per hour fee, they are going to maintain that here. Okay, or else if they are paying on the rates, it will be maintained in the rate sections. So the rate type, we can select any one of them. 
and put on the requirements. If this is the P. So it based upon the company's requirement, they are gonna do that. Management events. Management events are any of the events that they wanna that they wanna showcase in SOW. So for example, if it's like management events are like, you know, it's not for the payment purpose. It is, it is just, uh, for example, if it is a kick call, kick off call for an implementation, uh, requirements gathering for the implementation, so on and so forth. These kind of stuff, if they want to disclose that, if they want, if they want to maintain and if they want to provide each and everything to the supplier, they're going to maintain that here. In many cases, they don't do it because they'll, they'll completely leave it to the suppliers to decide everything. They have they just give the time frame within which they can work around and get back to the buyer. Okay, so the questions like that. So this, these are the questions, you know, if at all in case when uh, in case you know if we are sending out the SOW bid or if it is an SOW, if supplier has any questions, we can go ahead and select these questions if we create it. Okay. So these are the questions library. So all these are library because it is just maintained there. If and only if we use it in the SOW template. So we are getting into the SOW template. So I see one of the SOW template. And you can see everything that we discussed on. Okay. You see the type, name, type is again, SOW type is again maintained within the system. Defined by, we see this lock sign. This lock sign indicates, you know, at the time of configuration, it's been locked. An administrator cannot go ahead and change it. They're defined by the buyer. SOW will always be defined by the buyer. Is it a master SOW template? No, it's not a master SOW template. Okay. So used to create SOW bit. Yes, we can create SOW bit out of this. Though it's not a master SOW template, we can use it. We can inherit it. Okay. We can inherit the data from this template, but it is not called as the master because there are various stuff that is that needs to be defined uh, across different SWPs. Associate all business units, currencies, clauses, they are not using clauses, managing events, they are not doing that. Events, they are not. Please, SWP worker, schedule, optional. It's, it's only the schedule that they are using, which is optional. Okay. So SOW rules, disallow approval of items when maximum budget exceeds. So these are all self-explanatory for people. Okay, so when once you, when once the server is up and running, you can go ahead and look into that and understand how it's been defined there in that, in that server, okay. So these are all the rules and regulations. Uh, that's the characteristic rules, revision rules. So these are the, the rules and regulations that we need to follow so that you know we have the internal control within the system for the buyer, okay? Uh, there are uh, the, some of the important stuff we discussed. This is the SOW type. Okay, 
So it's only one SOW type. Extensively, they are not using IP. That's the reason why we have only one. And they are not using any of the characteristics as well. It's only one which they are using. SOW worker role needs to be maintained here. This is the SOW worker role and the schedule library. It's schedules, even they are not using and hence they are not defined. Yet. Okay. So these are the things that we need to keep in mind while we are working with the SOW module the basic stuff that we have to understand while we are working in the SWW module. 